Hello and welcome to the Penniston Community Church service. I hope you will be able to join us in the worship and that you will enjoy the messages that we've prepared for today. Thank you for joining us uh, in watching this video and we look forward to worshipping with you when we can be back in the chapel safely. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy the service and thank you for being with us. So let us begin our service with a time of worship. Let us draw near to God through songs and prayer and remember that God never intended us to bear our own burdens. We may be feeling weighed down with worry over loved ones and friends who are sick or injured, or maybe they are just in an at-risk group if they do get ill. We may also be feeling the pressure of work or the loneliness that has come with restrictions on who we can meet and where. But God told us to cast our burdens onto him because he's always there for us. My troubled soul In these troubled times, we should not only remember to cast our burdens onto God, but to remember God's grace. Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. But he, Jesus, said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. God has given us the gracious gift of Christ, and that is all we need.
Let us take a moment of quiet now to draw near to God and to reflect on these words before the Burnham family lead us in a time of prayer. Thank you, God, that you're so cool. Thank you, God, that you made the world. Thank you, God, that you made us and like, look after us. Thank you, God, that you listen to us. God, we pray for our world. We ask that you help us beat coronavirus. We pray you give wisdom to the leaders around the world and in workplaces as they try and keep people safe. We pray you give skill and knowledge to scientists working on treatments and a vaccine and care and compassion to those who are looking after others. God, we pray for our church and Peniston community. We thank you for answering our prayers. We continue to pray for those who are unwell and we ask for your healing upon them. We also thank you that we now have a mortgage agreement for the purchase of the church building. We ask that the church can be used for your glory and to make you known in Peniston. Amen. And now, as our time of worship comes to an end, it's time for something completely different. Children of all ages at church have been taking part in a colouring competition, so let's see what they've managed to achieve. message from some, well, unusual visitors. Hello. Hello. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, yes. Mm. Are we two metres apart? Hmm, I don't think so. Let me just shuffle back a little bit. How are you feeling then? I'm grumpy and fed up. Everything has changed since this virus came along. I can't even go to school. Oh, I thought you'd like that. It's my mum and my dad. They're very strict teachers. Lessons from 10 in the morning till lunchtime. Mm. Sounds like a short day to me. No fun. And I can't mess around anymore. And talking, I can't want to talk to my friends. You can always talk to them on Zoom. It's not the same. Little Moose, you are moaning. Has anything good happened? Yes. Go on. No violin lessons anymore. My teacher is fed up with me playing the wrong notes on Zoom. No more till September. Hurrah! I see. The COVID-19 disease has brought a lot of changes, hasn't it? But Moose, one thing never changes. What's that? It's God's love for us. It never changes. His love and goodness stays the same, whatever is going on around us. He carries on blessing us every day. Thanks, Big Alligator, for reminding me of that and helping me see all the good things God has given me. And finally, our sermon for today is brought to us by Duffrig. Well, good afternoon. It's good to be with you again today. Today, I want to address a really important subject, and that is about how we deal with things when trouble crowds in on us. This adds a bit to my recent messages on managing fear and anxiety and brings, I hope, a really practical way to help you if you ever experience trouble. Psalm 42. Psalm 42 is well known, but not always well understood. How many of us sang this song? As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. And felt like a fraud. Often I don't feel my soul's longing after the Lord. I know it's right that it should, but too often my soul longs for a sit down after a busy day, or a cup of coffee, or a hug from a friend. If you, like me, 
had felt bad about not being able to sing these words and mean them every time because we sang it so often in the 90s and the 80s. That is because we're misunderstanding the psalm. So let's get into it. There are three steps described here by the psalmist. So I'm going to look at each one of them. Following these steps is, I believe, the biblical and godly way to deal with our distress. And the steps that the psalmist re reveals for us are these. Pour out your soul. Have a word with yourself. And then put your hope in God. So let's read some of the psalm. It begins like this. As the deer pants for streams of water, and so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? So pouring out your soul. The starting point of the psalmist is the sense of his need for God. He thirsts for God. He longs to meet him. The psalmist has been in tears and is being mocked because God does not seem to be responding to him. So he pours out his heart to the Lord. He is in turmoil, confused, anxious, distressed. He pours out his heart. It's messy. It isn't well organised or pretty. It's just pouring out. Now, trusting God does not mean that we have no feelings, nor that they are in some way wrong or useless. We still have feelings, and they, like the psalmist's feelings, may be feelings of despondency and despair. And that's okay. God hears the cry of the human heart with compassionate ears. He hurts when you hurt. And he will bring us through these trials in his time and his way, but he will bring us through. So we pour out our soul to the Lord. Secondly, have a word with yourself. At this point in the psalm, the author does something extraordinary. He stops for a moment his prayers. He ceases speaking to God and he isn't speaking to us either. Right now in these verses, having poured out his soul to the Lord, he says this. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. In some ways, I think this might be the most extraordinary verse in Scripture. It's certainly one of the most helpful for anyone who has struggled in their walk with God. It's not written for God. It isn't prayer. And it isn't written with you and, my, you and me in mind either. This the psalmist writes for himself. He speaks to himself. So I want to unpack that a little bit. Do you remember Jesus said these words? Uh, it's in John 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. In this world you will have trouble, says Jesus. That same Jesus that said in John chapter 14, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Is that a contradiction? You will have trouble. Do not let your hearts be troubled. But when we are downcast, when we feel low, when anxieties are crowding in, when the troubles of the world become the trouble in our hearts, we must have a word with ourselves. It is not a contradiction. Trouble belongs in the world. It does not belong in the believer's heart. Let me say that again. Trouble belongs in the world. It does not belong in the believer's heart, in your heart. So we must speak up. To whom should we speak? Well, to our very souls. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Okay, if we're going to have a word with ourselves, what does that look like? Well, not only is it important to talk to yourself, I believe it is just as important not to listen to yourself. Can I ask you something? If 
if you listen to yourself, what do you hear? What does your heart say in times of trouble? Perhaps when a relative is ill, when you're worried about something, when the world has been overwhelmed by a pandemic. Does your heart say, Jesus has told me these things so that in him I may have peace. He told me that in this world I will have trouble and I'm taking heart because Jesus has overcome the world. Is that what your heart says? Or maybe it says, I will not let my heart be troubled. I believe in God, so I will believe also in Jesus. Is that what your heart says? Because it isn't what my heart says. My heart says, ah, it's all going wrong. What a mess. I knew this would happen. This is all my fault. What am I going to do? How often do we hear the advice in these days? Listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. Don't listen to your heart. Your heart talks rubbish. Your heart will deceive you. Your heart will confuse you. Your heart will condemn you. Don't listen to your heart. Talk to your heart. So what should you talk about when you talk to your heart? Talk about God. Of course. And here are some things that you might say. There are four things. Uh, Tim Keller speaks about this and, uh, and he uh, recommends these four things. First, this is what I know about God. So let's talk about that. This is what I know about God, his person, his character. Maybe use a psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So that's number one. Number two, this is what God has done. This is what God has done. So maybe you look at John 3.16, he's God so loved the world that he sent his only son that whoever may believe in him may not perish but have eternal life. The third thing, maybe we could get more personal, rather than just this is what God has done, this is what I remember God has done for me. And the psalmist expresses that uh, in this very psalm. He writes, my soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. And the psalmist is remembering the events of the land of the Jordan, which God dried up so that Israelites could cross into the promised land. The heights of Hermon and of Mount Mizar, where many kings were defeated. Now, maybe you can't recall great battles that God has delivered into your hands. Perhaps you're thinking of something smaller in scale, but just as important to you. What the psalmist is describing is that deliberate practice of calling to mind the times when God seems closer, when God is faithful. I have my own Ebenezer's. I have my own monuments to God's faithfulness, and so do you. Markers of times when God's faithfulness has been evident. So that's three. I said we should recall what we know about God. We can remember what God has done. We can call to mind the things he has done for us. The fourth one is, let's remember what God has promised. We bring to mind God's promises. And if you're at a loss to think of any personal ones, a glance at scripture. How about just these two? Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, I'm confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. How about Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13? And you were also included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. I could go on and on about the promises that God makes in scripture, but I'll leave that to you. Search for them, read them, hang on to them, declare them. 
Let me sum up. Pour out your soul to the Lord. Have a word with yourself. And third, put your hope in God. The psalmist says this a number of times through this psalm. He said, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him. He is redirecting his hope towards God. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope. He is instructing his soul. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. And Tim Keller again suggests that directing our hope to God uh, will have these effects. When I think about getting right with God, I dwell on his completed work, not on my guilt. When I think about my poor attempts at being more like Jesus, I realise I can still change. When I doubt even that I am a Christian, I will remember he promised me adoption into his family. When I think of my life as it draws to an end, I am not afraid because he has a home for me. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this psalm, for the guidance we find within it. Help us, Lord, to pour out our souls to you, to speak the truths of our faith into our weakness rather than listening to ourselves. And let us keep our hope directed in you. I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. Amen. Thank you for listening. It's great to have you uh, with us, listening to Penistone Community Church. And I hope that we will be able to join together uh, back in the chapel uh, when things get back to some form of normality. In the meantime, stay well and keep in touch with us.